Okay, depending on when you're watching this, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Ian Middleton, I'm a travel and landscape photographer, and you can find me on my website ianmiddletonphotography.com or check out my Facebook and Instagram pages at Ian Middleton Photography. But this is one of my quick photography tips and no doubt most of you watched the lunar eclipse a few days ago it was quite a spectacular thing um, what was special about this particular event was that it was actually a blood micromoon and it was also in opposition with the planet Mars if you can see down here this little speck here this is the planet Mars okay now a micro moon is the opposite of a super moon the super moon is when the moon is at its closest point to the earth the micro moon is when the moon is at its furthest point from the earth so it was a very special event and a lot of people were out photographing it myself included now lunar eclipse well night photography moon photography in itself is quite difficult but the lunar eclipse is also quite difficult to photograph as uh, I've seen a lot of people have posted pictures oh why is my picture look so bad now it's a bit of an art in itself and um, usually I'm the sort to say that you can get good pictures with nearly all cameras well in these kinds of situations uh, the better the camera the better the equipment you have the better you, the, the kind of photo you're gonna get there's no doubt about that if you try to photograph it with a smartphone or a compact you're really not going to get the quality you really need first of all a very good lens uh, a zoom lens is necessary I shot this picture with a 100 to a 400 millimeter Canon L series lens a very very high quality and I zoomed in at 260 millimeters as you can see because I wanted to also get Mars and the moon itself now the other thing about this is you're going to need a very high ISO because uh, obviously uh, the moon when it's eclipsed is not very bright okay because it's in the Earth's shadow so it's not very bright at all and when it's in full totality it's very very difficult to photograph um, the problem with the moon is you can't use I mean typically when you have low light you would use a very long exposure now with the moon you can't do that because it's moving it may not seem like it when you look at it in the sky and but it it's moving surprisingly fast and when you zoom in very close and get close to it with a zoom lens then this uh, long exposure really makes a difference. So I'm going to show you here an example of that. This was the supermoon many many years ago photographed over Lake Blair and as an example I used a 30 second exposure. I use this as an example to show you just how much the moon moves. So you can see it's almost like an egg <laughs> in the sky. And that was a 30 second exposure. So when you're getting close like that you, you capture the movement. So when photographing the moon up close you can't use too long an exposure and for that reason okay I can open up my aperture to f5.6 because there's no depth of field I'm going in right in close to the moon that's great but even that's not enough when the moon is eclipsed the light is very low so in this case I had to go right up to ISO 5000 now that's pretty high and that's why I say the equipment comes in because if you don't have a, a high enough quality camera uh, you get huge problems with noise at ISO 5000 if you can guard that high I took this on a Canon uh, 5D Mark III but uh, okay yeah, that's a very high quality camera but also what's important here is this is a full frame sensor it's a large sensor so the larger sensors are much better at coping with noise at high ISOs so in that case it was much better but even if you zoom into a hundred you can still see you know there's still some noise there so even then I'm gonna have to use some noise reduction features and software in order to uh, improve this picture but anyway uh, that's what I shot it with okay now 
you'll notice this little bit here you'll notice that I took my photo just as the moon was moving out of the Earth's shadow so just as the totality was ending and the moon was starting to move out now the reason I did this was because it makes the moon brighter yeah and you get that little glint as the moon is moving out so that's exactly what I wanted to do but I didn't want to take it too far out because once the moon starts to move further out of the Earth's shadow and gets much brighter the sky gets much brighter and in which case then it's going to diminish the brightness of Mars because poor little Mars is much further away and once the moon starts to get bright it starts to overtake Mars and so at this point yeah the balance between the two was just right so we still got Mars nice and bright at the, in the bottom there so it was the perfect moment to take this shot plus also the sky was still very dark so we still got some stars there now this is what I'm going to show you today now you can see that you can't see many of the stars now there's a great tool when you do night photography when you're doing star photography there's a great tool in Adobe Camera Raw which we can use to bring out the stars now I should emphasize here that if you're doing this if you're doing any kind of night photography uh, you must shoot in RAW because you can really bring out the best of the shot when using RAW okay so this is photographed in RAW and I've opened it in Adobe Camera RAW I've used Photoshop you can also use Lightroom so you get the same features there now the first thing I'm gonna do is I shot this okay I'm, I never worry too much about white balance because when I shoot in RAW I can fine tune the white balance so I shot this in daylight setting now you can see there's a lot of red in the sky down here you know because um, of the when you shoot in daylight or anything above at night you get a lot of light pollution yeah, and this comes out in the form of a red redness in the sky we want to make it nice and black so ideally when shooting in RAW you either set it to fluorescent when sh photographing the moon or when you're in Adobe Camera RAW change it to fluorescent now here you can see see the difference okay if I go back to a shot see all the red here on the bottom shoot it in fluorescent all that redness disappears and it turns more and more black okay now we not lost some of the redness here in the moon but that's not such a problem we can bring that out again afterwards so I've set my white balance now this little tool here clarity the clarity slider for night sky shots is amazing now it's very important here that you get the exposure right now in this one here I'm going to show you uh, the We'll move that back to fluorescent again now this shot was underexposed this one here is underexposed a bit okay this one here was exposed uh, a bit brighter so what I'm going to do here is whack up clarity slider now do you see all the stars are popping out in the sky let's pull that back okay look around here yeah uh, see the stars all popping out yeah the clarity slider brings out the stars it's amazing now if we do it here they don't pop out as much see because this image was underexposed this wasn't exposed well enough whereas this one was and in this case the clarity slider has brought out all of these stars look at that isn't that amazing yeah, it's a wonderful tool if we go in close now again this is the sea you can see it's also brought out the noise if we pull that back uh, it's brought out the stars but it's also brought out a lot of noise so that's where we want to go to this tool here our noise reduction and I want to pull this across to 50 percent that's going to reduce the noise in the scene there we go but its stars are still there and if we go back see stars have disappeared pull the clarity slider over the stars have reappeared okay so now we can see more of the stars we pull back our 
noise reduction just a touch 25 okay zoom in on that yeah. now it's a bit of a trade-off really so the more you reduce the noise you also reduce the intensity of the stars a bit yeah, so if I pull it back to 25 For me that's about right and I've still got some of these stars popping out in the picture okay so let's go back to our main area here okay now you'll also notice that the clarity slider has also brought out the intense the detail in the moon as well which is really nice now the other slider we can use is the contrast if we wrap the contrast over, yeah, this also darkens our sky. Yeah, see? That's a little bit too much on the moon, for me personally. Yeah. But it's brought out the stars and this area here nicely. Now what we can do about the moon is go up to our uh, graduated filter tool and drag it down just below the moon hold down the shift key drag it down here it doesn't matter how hard it is because it's all black okay and then i can pull back my contrast slider to reduce the effect it's done on the moon there because the reason i want that is because the contrast has taken away the glint here so i want to pull that down a bit to bring that back because i really like that personally okay uh, and there you have it you could also adjust your your highlights a touch pulling back your highlights will pull out the detail in the moon yeah uh, so I would put it back just a teeny touch to bring some of that back okay and there you have it now I can open this image now into Photoshop there we go ah, let's zoom in on that look how it's brought out all those stars isn't that beautiful yeah the moon is nice lots of detail in that moon you've got the nice glint of the light as it's coming out of the earth's shadow but what's also important here is that Mars is still very bright in your picture yeah. so there it is I love it you can if you want to you've got more tools in Photoshop I like this the highlights tool in Photoshop if you wanna it's much better than the one in camera raw because you actually have a lot more finer adjustment over it so you can even pull that back a touch let's pull out a touch more detail over here in the side of the moon Okay, and also the curves tool gives you finer adjustment also for the contrast. Bring it up there. Just just a touch there. Okay. And now you see you really got a lovely night shot there. All that detail brought out. Okay, so there you go that's how you do it okay hope you found this useful uh, give it a go yourself obviously they have to wait till the next lunar eclipse for it or even just practice photographing the moon itself against the night sky okay uh, well hope you've enjoyed it check out my other videos on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page at ianmiddletonphotography.com and catch you later